<laughs> Go through. Kyle, uh, you're, you're now seven games into this. Um, how do you feel you're progressing? Yeah, um, obviously I feel like from week one to week seven, just looking at it kind of from a grand scheme of things, I feel like uh, personally, I feel like I've just gotten more comfortable, more comfortable in the system, uh, more comfortable in my leadership role, um, just more comfortable in all facets of the game. But at the same time, you know, as good it is, as good as it is that we're seven, I think there's so much room for improvement for not only myself but the offense and the team. And so I think that's exciting, that, and you know, knowing that we got two top ten wins, and there's so much room for improvement. It looked like there were a few throws on Saturday, and it, 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 you didn't put exactly where you wanted. Is that mm -hmm. a fair assessment? Yeah. How hard are you on yourself when that happens? Yeah, I mean, I don't think, um, you know, regardless of what any coach has to say, what you know, anybody out in the outside world has to say, no one's going to be harder on myself than I am. You know, I'm my own biggest critic, and you know, I know if this team is going to accomplish. Uh, the things that we want to accomplish, um, you know, I know I have to take my game to the next level. And so, you know, I don't think that's a secret, you know, so I, I take it as a challenge every single day, just trying out to come and, and get better. Uh, what is taking your game to the next level? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like uh, there's a million different answers for that. Uh, I think the biggest thing uh, playing quarterback here is just being a leader, getting all the guys on the same page, rallying the troops, you know, when things aren't going great and we're kind of spinning our tires, you know, getting guys going. Uh, but then I think just from uh, uh, you know performance standpoint, just putting points on the board for this offense, and you know whatever I need to do, uh, you know whether that's staying in the pocket, making a throw, getting us into the right run check, you know getting us in the right protection, whatever that is, and you know I feel like we're taking steps in the right direction, which is uh, the good thing. Um, but at the same time, you know just continuing to get better off things like that. The fumble that you had, the fumble during the game, were you trying to pull that back? Did you double clutch because you saw the, the contact with Marvin down the field? Yeah, so Marvin was really the first read on that play and obviously kind of got held up there. Uh, and so I got out of the pocket uh, trying to extend it. And we were kind of on that fringe range. So I was trying to throw it away and avoid taking a sack because I feel like if we took a sack there, we'd probably be out of field goal range. Uh, so trying to save points. But, you know, I think I have to do a better job of um, getting rid of that ball um, earlier or, you know, if, you know, worst comes to worst, just taking a sack there and, you know, living with it rather than, you know, what could have been a touchdown for Penn State. That was a play at Purdue where a similar something happened where you were going down and you tried to throw the ball away. I think your knee was ultimately down before you got rid of the ball. Anyways, I guess how much of a talk is there between you and Ryan about this play is maybe not happening? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's something that I need to eliminate, um, just plays like that. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like sometimes, uh, you know, if you make the play, everybody's happy, it's great. But at the same time, you kind of have to, have to weigh the risk with the reward. Um, and I feel like that's part of the game, but that's part of the game that I feel like I need to get better at and uh, not putting the ball in harm's way because, you know, if we stay on schedule and, you know, if I took a sack there against uh, Penn State, you know, it would have sucked in the moment, but, you know, they wouldn't have gotten uh, a touchdown. You know, thankfully, the, the rest all the hold, but. Carl, with Carl, with Carl, for... he, was the, he was the second most targeted receiver on Saturday, I think, mm -hmm. behind Marvin and Kate, obviously, but. Uh, what goes into forming chemistry with a guy who comes two years after you did? Yeah, I think uh, Carnell getting here in the spring helped um, myself a lot and helped him out a lot too. And um, you know, he was advanced from the time he got here. You know, I think everybody saw that right from the jump. And uh, you know, he had a really good spring ball and uh, got some reps with the ones in the spring ball, which uh, helped out a lot. And then he you know worked his tail off all off season and we got a bunch of reps. And then fall camp, the same thing. Um, so I feel like we definitely made up for that lack of um, time together uh, just this past eight months, whatever it was. And then, uh, you know, he's just a tremendous player to be, you know, 18 years old and to be able to step into a game like that um, and, you know, play really well. And uh, obviously, you guys see my trust in him. I targeted him a few times. Um, so, you know, the, the future is beyond right for the playoff. Was there a moment, uh, whether it be in the spring or in the fall, where you were like, okay, like, this guy's going to be with the one soon enough. Yeah, I mean, really when uh, Mech and Julian um, kind of decide they weren't going to get reps, I uh, forget exactly the reason why in the spring, um, and then Carnell kind of stepped up into that role right away. And I uh, and, uh, did a really good job, and, you know, I, I knew right kind of from that first day, just the way he carried himself, the way he ran his routes, the way he talked, uh, talked and saw the game, you know, he was going to be, you know. And then uh, one more thing. What's it like throwing it against Jermaine? <laughs>
Yeah, Jermaine is uh, he's probably one of the most competitive kids on the team. And uh, when he got here, it didn't matter if he was going against Marvin or a freshman receiver. He was going to bring the same exact intensity, the same exact focus to, to every single rep. And uh, that was really the first time I saw a young DB. It kind of reminded me of Denzel's freshman year when he started. Um, you know, he kind of, uh, his eyes lit up at, at the opportunity to play against good competition. If you were a coach, wouldn't that be what you'd want to see in a cornerback from the get-go? 100%. Yeah, I mean, I think cornerback, um, you know, you have to be a little bit crazy to play. You know, you're knowing that you're on an island one-on-one -on -one with the best athletes on the world and it's your job to, to lock them down. You know, that's, that's tough to do. And um, you know, he plays with a bunch of confidence, plays with a bunch of energy, so he's going to be really good. Uh, what, what do you see from Wisconsin's defense? You may have answered this earlier before you got your call, but what just jumps out at you about the way they play? Yeah, I think Coach Fickle's got them playing really well. And obviously he has a great track record regardless of where he's been. There's been a good defense there. And uh, they're super well coached. You can see that on film. And they have a good scheme on top of that, and they play hard. That's the biggest thing. And, you know, those guys bring it every single play, and that's noticeable in film. And so we know it's going to be a big test going out there on Saturday, uh, 730 in a tough environment against a tough defense. So we know we've got our hands full. Is that is that near perfect game or whatever you want to call it, you know, that's, that's still eluding you guys offensively to a certain extent? Is that like a carrot for you guys? How would you explain it? A hundred percent. You know, I feel like everybody knows on offense that we really haven't put together a complete full game yet. You know, and there's been times where we've been rolling and putting points up on the board. And, uh, you know, there's been times where we needed to have it and we did. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I don't I know that everybody in the offense can't say from quarter one to quarter four We put together a complete game. So that's still something that we're chasing for you were telling you know, the, like, the need to understand when to just take a sack and when to try to make a play is that For when you're new to this as a guy who's typically been able to make those plays at, Especially in high school is that a difficult thing to try to develop and get inside your head that sometimes you just need to be able to take the sack and live to see another day. Yeah, uh, I feel like, um, you know, I said this earlier, it's just about weighing the, the risk with the reward. Um, you know, obviously you want to scramble out of the pocket and make those big time plays and, you know, extended plays and, um, you know, continue to move the, the offense and put points up on the board. But, um, you know, you can't put the team at risk, you know, when you're trying to do that. And if the opportunity presents itself and it's clean, I think you have to take it. But at the same time, um, you just have to be smart about it. I think that's the biggest thing. Where are you in that development versus when you got first got here as a freshman to where you are now? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's one of the hardest things to replicate in practice because um, obviously the defense isn't really allowed to touch you uh, or tackle you in practice, or whatever. Um, and then once you get in the game, I think you kind of have to just kind of see almost where you're at, you know, in terms of, um, you know, just making those plays. And, um, you know, I think there's been times this year where I've done that. And then there's been times where, you know, I should have been smart and just taking a sack. Um, so I think, you know, right now I have a pretty good balance of where I am. I, I definitely think learn my lesson uh, from last week and just have to continue to grow up on that. So is a lot of this just like learning on the run? Just learning on the run, just like as you're going through this every week. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, um, you know, that, the more reps I get, the more comfortable I am, the more I know, uh, the more I see, uh, just all that. Um, you know, I feel like in all assets of the game, just the more um, games I'm playing uh, and the more just opportunity, you know, the better. And so in, in terms of, um, you know, what we were just talking about, I think that's just another um, asset of that. You're kind of just answering that, but there are certain things you can't learn until you're, in the fire, right? Mm -hmm. What what is what are some specific things that you learn now through seven games that okay, I wouldn't have done this in August and now I, I know better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think um, one of those things is like when you know the offense isn't exactly moving the way you want uh, for regardless of what reason you know being able to kind of rally the troops a little bit and in practice you know if you have a, a bad period it's like all right you know kind of put that one behind us and move on to the next period but that's not that that way in the game you know in the game you have to play the next play you have to play the next series and I think you know being the quarterback um, it's extremely important to kind of get all those guys going get them all on the same page and uh, you know it's something you just can't replicate in practice. And so now I feel like in Game Seven, you know, there's been a few of those moments where you know we've just been frustrated for whatever reason. And uh, you know I've had to kind of step up and just kind of get uh, the troops going a little bit.